Hey, what's up, folks? Will here once again. Just want to say Merry Christmas uh, to everybody. It's very early on here on the 25th of December. I just thought I'd get this fight um, prediction card out for you. We're going to be breaking down UFC 219, the very last UFC prediction card for myself for 2017 as, as Chris Cyborg defends a UFC featherweight championship against Holly Holm in the main event. And in the co-main event, we have an absolute barn burner between Khabib Nurmagomedov against Edson Barboza. Um, and a, a fairly okay card to finish off the year. I must admit, there's some fights in here I'm really looking forward to seeing. Fighters, I'm looking to see if they can make that career progression moving on facing uh, opponents that are definitely the, the biggest fights of their, of, of their careers. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking talking about that very, very shortly. Just, I know I'll probably say it and I harp on every video. Um, if you can like, comment, subscribe. Um, just you've been phenomenal this year with me like this year has been such a huge growth for my channel um, after doing it for so long to see that I'm still getting a lot of people coming in like I was looking forward to, to hitting 1500 subscribers now I'm literally going to finish off the year maybe over 15 uh, 1550 which is crazy in the space of a few weeks gaining an extra 50 followers so 2017 has been a great year for me and that's all down to you guys helping build my channel. I, I'm the one that puts out the videos. These are the guys that sit there, watch, give your predictions, um, leave your comments, um, whether they're good or bad. doesn't matter. I like hearing other people's perspective on fights, um, and I hope you like mine. And I, I, I know that some of you do, which is really nice to hear, but I'm just a fan like you guys. I, I sit and watch fights, and I break them down, and uh, I just love hearing other people's perspective on fights. But honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for, for a big 2017, and let's try and make it bigger for 2018 so we're going to get into this one um and we're going to be starting off in the middleweight division with marvin vittori against omari akhmadov um and i will say that i haven't been i have watched um a fair bit of a tape for the card but i've been working long hours at work as well um so probably over the last two weeks since the winnipeg card so if i maybe miss a couple of things out don't be too harsh on me um but i'm going to try and i, I was watching fights today after i finished work so um to catch up and try and refresh the memory and get some of those thoughts that i was originally thinking so i'm going to start off down in this division Mid middleweight division marvin vittori against omari akhmadov interesting fight because if you probably go back and watch the early fights of marvin vittori in the ufc i was fairly high in this guy coming in he fought in the uk circuit and i'd seen his fights through that uh, i just thought for a young kid he was like 20 21 years old physical specimen um, like the fact that he moved out to, to King's MMA in America and does his camps out there. But I think his kind of career progression is um, kind of stifled a little bit. And there's some things that are shown out to me that I thought he can maybe work on those and he's really not, doesn't seem to be kind of working. I thought his striking would be more improved being with Rafael Cordero. I think it has improved. I, I thought we might have seen more from it. I think his cardio is still a big issue for me. I know he's coming off a decision win over Vito Miranda. He went the full three three rounds. I think that Miranda is one of those guy one of those guys who can gas himself out fairly badly as well. Um, and he's only lost in the UFCs to Antonio Carlos Jr. I just there's something about him that it's kind of putting me off a little bit now, which is something I, I usually don't change. And I don't know why it is because I mean he's two out his three fights in the UFC he's got wins and he's beat solid guys and not, nothing special but when he has faced that one guy who I think can be good Carlos Jr he did lose that fight and he gassed really badly and for a guy that young to to gas and not really have great cardio it maybe it's a little bit indiscipline it's something that I really think he should be working on now saying that Omari Akhmadov is not I, he's not a bad fighter but he's nothing great either but he's solid he's one of those russian guys he's really hard to get out of there he's always going to be in the fight um and he's russian he's one of those guys that's just he can he's built on taking you down he's built on winning very close rounds um and he did that in his last fight against abdul um razak al hassan there was a lot of hype on abdul razak al hassan coming into that one i was one of those guys i thought abdul's going to run through this guy um he survived the initial barrage from Al Hassan, and then he started to implement his game plan: stifling wrestling, stifling grappling, just laying on him and just really taking him down, and and just kind of winning the fight through that. And um, as I say, on the feet, 
I think both these guys don't really show an awful lot. I think they sit back a lot. They, they kind of pot shot a little bit. I think that Vitori is going to want to try and clinch in this one and put Atmadov against the fence. And I think Atmadov is going to get takedowns. I do. I think um, he can win close rounds via his wrestling. And that's where I'm going with this one. So I'm going to go with Omari Atmadov. I haven't seen the early lines in this one. I would think it's a, a pick em. I I'm not even going to go and look at the lines now. I'll, I'll look them up. Um, but I think if... I'd be very surprised if Vittori is like a big favourite. Um, but I like Atmadov. I think he's got that veteran savviness about him. I think he can win close rounds. And I think during the 15 minutes, I think he's probably got a little bit more a little bit more in the gas tank. So I'm going to pick Omari Atmadov. I'm going to pick him via decision. It could be a split decision. But I like Atmadov to win the fight. Uh, moving on to the bantamweight division, we have Tim Elliott against Mark De La Rosa, the debutant here. Tim Elliott was supposed to fight at UFC Winnipeg, glass card out. Petro Menga missed weights, so he didn't take the fight. They got, got him a fight in 2019 and got him in here against a 9-0 prospect coming in, fighting out of Texas. Um, and a guy that I've been watching, I have knew about for the last year or so. Um, pretty a good all-around prospect, really good boxing. He uh, works well behind a jab, um, throws nice combinations. He, he really doesn't have any power, but he does put some nice combinations together and, and he can counter strike when he needs to. I think where the he, he, shining light is his uh, ground game, his jiu-jitsu. I think he's good off his back. I think he's good off top from what I've seen of his two fights. I've seen two of his fights in Combatche America um, and he won those fairly convincingly. Um Overall, a really decent fight and a young fighter. That I think he's only 22, 23 years old. So I, I see a really high ceiling for him in the UFC in the next few years. I like his all-around game. I really do. I think he's and I think he can give Tim Elliott problems here. I think Elliott's going to want to look to take down um, De La Rosa here, and I think I think he will. I think he he will get takedowns. But I think that De La Rosa is going to give him some scary moments down there where he could be throwing up some missions and potentially getting uh, sweeps and uh, maybe him getting a, a, two advancing positions on top, maybe ground and pound. I see this being a very close fight. Tim Elliott is very awkward to fight though. And that's something that Mark De La Rosa probably hasn't faced. Someone who's gangly, um, just awkward. And it's just he's a hard guy to game plan for. Plus, he's a veteran. He's been around. He's fought a lot of good guys. His UFC wins aren't the greatest, but he's got UFC wins, and that means a lot um, against the guy who's coming in wanting to get his first UFC win. Um, I wanted to pick De La Rosa, but I just think that Tim Elliott's a little bit too awkward and uh, pretty hard to game plan for, especially in short notice. Um, so I'm going to pick Tim Elliott. I'm going to pick him via a very close split, though. I can see De La Rosa winning around... Um, in there somewhere. I think I can see him making it close maybe early on and maybe Tim Elliott coming in strong late on. But um I like this De La Rosa kid. I think I thought he looked quite good in the tape that I watched. But I'm gonna pick Tim Elliott via a very close um decision. Moving on to the prelim card, we have a uh, Lewis Smolka against Matthias Nicolo. This is one of the fights I'm really looking forward to. Lewis Smolka <laughs> there's been some articles out recently and there's videos like he was really dependent on alcohol um, and that's all he would sit around and do. He wouldn't go train. He'd go sit around and just booze all day. Uh, and that's not a good sign for a, like a supposedly a top tier UFC fighter. He's coming off three losses in a row now. I know um, the fighters he is, is facing in these last three fights are, are legit guys. They're good guys. Um, and the, the, the guys that have fought for championships in uh, the past as well, like Ray Borg fought for a championship and uh, Tim Elliott fought for a championship. Brandon Moreno came out and caught him with a, an absolute wicked guillotine. But he hasn't won in like nearly a year and a half. His last win was against Ben Nguyen, which I think is a good win. Especially going down to, um, I think it, that was in Sioux Falls, I remember. I thought it was going to, I was going to say Sydney there, but it was in Sioux Falls, uh, which is kind of like a home away from home for, for Ben Nguyen. So he had all the, the crowd kind of on his side and uh, won that fight. Squirrely guy, Fairly decent in all aspects. I think his ground game shines out more than anything. I think he can advance position. He can find uh, takedowns. I think his ground and pound can be lethal. I've seen that against Neil Siri. 
seen against uh, for my own eyes against Paddy uh, Holohan in Dublin. His ground and pound was like really brutal, and uh, he stopped Paddy in that one. But uh, Matthias Nicholas, a guy that we don't really know too much about, he's been serving a ban um, after you sad caught him. Um, so interesting to see that he has got a UFC win over John Moraga, who at the time John Moraga was kind of deteriorating a little bit, and he seemed to pick himself back up. But to have a, a win in your UFC, well, in fact, he's two and only UFC because he beat Bruno Coera as well. So, um, and he stopped that fight in the third round. But um, this is a close fight. I'm seeing a lot of people very, very high in Nicolau, um, and this is one of the, the the fights I did see the line, and I seen him like. Minus 400, which really shocked me. Now, I know Smoker is maybe not the greatest mindset at the minute, but this is a do-or-die fight. And I think that... Oh, I'm, I'm kind of struggling with this fight. I'm 55-45 for the guy I'm going to pick. But um, I think if you've got a little bit of spare change lying around, not if you're not betting big, big, big amount of money, um, I wouldn't mind putting some money on Lewis Smoker. Uh, but if you don't feel comfortable, like I don't feel comfortable, you really even picking a guy in this fight, then I wouldn't even think about being it. But if you've got, a, if you see a definitive advantage either guy has, or maybe the mentality, you like the mentality of Nicolau over Smoker, then honestly, then you should maybe take the guy. You should go with the guy who you think. I, I don't think Smoker's a bad underdog bet at all, in all honesty. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna pick Nicolau. But honestly, I'm like 55, 45% confident in him. I think I think Smoker is live here. I think he realises that this is do or die for him. And if he doesn't win this fight, he's going to be out of the UFC. Then he, maybe his problems outside the UFC get worse to him not being in the UFC. So um, it's a it's a hard fight to call. Because I, I, I am a fan of Smoker. But I did not like the interviews that I've seen with him. The articles that I've read. Um, how he's really dependent on alcohol. And that's... That's a tough thing, um, being a UFC fighter out there, and like, especially I think he's only still quite a young guy as well, and being that dependent on alcohol, and so I would actually like to see Lewis Smoker win. If I'm being honest with you, I thought he was a really nice guy when I met him, really down to earth, gave me a lot of time, but I just think that Nikolai is going to grind him out for for three rounds and win a decision. I think it's going to be close, but I just see Nikolai edging it very very closely. But see, I'm not confident in the pick really that much either. So, Nikolai via decision there. Featherweight division. Miles Jury against Rick Glenn. Uh, Miles Jury impressed me in his return after his two losses um, where he got his ass beat by Donald Cerrone. He came back against Mike Delatore and handled business like he really should have because Delatore is not a good fighter. He came out there, he got a, like a, kind of like a front headlock tape down, took him down, got his back and then started absolutely leaving some heavy ground and pound until De La Torre started um, really uh, bleeding profusely and the ref stepped in in the first I think it was UFC 210 back in Buffalo if I remember right um, but we really haven't seen that much of him he's been fairly quiet in social media I know he's back training at Alliance and uh, putting in the work there I know he was at Power MMA they dissolved and they, they went their own way so he's went back I see him train a lot with Jeremy Stevens, who has a fight coming up in January. The next fight card out against Doho Choi. Um, Rick Glenn is a, a very, very, very good grizzled veteran, though. And he, he showed that last time out against Gavin Tucker. The other kind of fights in 2018 I'm going to start looking at a little bit more. I was The hype of Gavin Tucker on the first fight kind of turned my head a little bit. And it, it took away from what Rick Glenn is. And that's a really tough guy who's beat some good guys outside the UFC so um, I like Jury I'm, I'm taking a guess saying Rick Glenn's probably going to be a big money underdog maybe plus 200 maybe above that so uh, maybe not a bad wee bet to throw on there I, I'm sure there's guys that I respect that do videos on here that will pick Rick Glenn that will bet Rick Glenn as well uh, I won't be betting this fight at all I'll be sitting back and a very interested observer though because I think Miles Jury he has a lot of talent I'm still interested to see him at, um, at featherweight to see... He, he looks in great shape. I went on his Instagram literally before I come on here just to have a look. Looks in phenomenal, phenomenal shape. Um, but Rick Glenn's tough. Rick Glenn is very tough. I am going to side with Miles Jury, though. I'm going to pick him. I think he could... It could be a decision. I'm going to go with a late TQ victory in round three. I think that Jury could get takedowns, 
take a, a keep continuing to take him down, put him against the the cage, use the clinch work, uh, and kind of beat him from there. But Rick Glenn can take a hellacious beating. He, he showed that in the the fight with Evan Dunham. He's went to Team Alpha Male. He looked a lot better in that Gavin Tucker fight. He's coming from a legit gym where he's training with legit guys week in week out. Um, Oh, the more I think about this, it's another close fight. But I am going to go with my initial gut feeling. And the person who, when I was watching the fights back, I, I still like what I see from Miles Jewett. He's still a young guy. Um, he maybe overhyped quite a lot early on coming off the tough show and so on. I'm going to go Miles Jewett. I'm maybe forced in a finish here. If not, it'll be a, a decision win for Miles Jewett. So that's my pick there. Uh, lightweight division. Dan Hooker against Mark Diacese. Bone Crusher. Looking forward to this fight. Um, Dan Hooker with an excellent knockout of Ross Pearson last time out. Flying knee, straight on the chin. Uh, put him down. And he's a guy that uh, looks good in spells. And then it, uh, and other times, I don't think he looks as great. I thought Ross Pearson is a guy that who is you can, it's clearly on the decline. So it was a decent matchup. Him moving up to 155 for the first time and getting that. Um, before that losses to Jason Knight, he lost to Yair Rodriguez. Two legit guys in the division. Oh, I thought Jason Knight looked a shell of himself against Ricardo Lamas. Um, with his wins over Hatsa Hioki with, with a beautiful head kick and Mark Ediva with a, a submission. Just an all-round tough, tough guy. Um, very durable. Who uh, can, take a, can take a lot of shots. And uh, it's just overall a really decent fighter. But I do think there is holes in his game. Now, Mark Diacese is obviously one of the guys that I've known about for a long time. Comes from the UK, uh, was the Bama champion, was pretty much known as a um, a grappler. Took you down, kind of laid on you for the three rounds. But since he's come into the UFC, he started to show off his striking, before, even before that, I should say. Um, like, he's went over Kane Musa and Rick uh, Cervasia, I think it was. He knocked them out dead inside 40 seconds, both fights with huge, huge shots. Very quick hands. And, um, but I think last time out, it showed the way you have to, to fight against Mark Diacese. And that is initially sur survived the barrage and then looked to put him against the cage and work on him and try and tire him out. Now, I think he injured himself a little bit in that fight, which didn't help. But Drakkar Closer, I thought when I watched it back again, um, I thought that he had the right game plan to beat that guy. Like, you need to be a, a tough wrestler who can hold him. And stop him from throwing those spinning attacks. Which, if you, I have him in Snapchat, and I look, and he, he's working on that a lot. But you can see that he's working on his wrestling. You can see he's working on everything pretty much. American top team. I do love the fact that he's American top team. I do like the fact that um, he will be hungry after losing that fight. I can see it, and uh, I like Mark Diaz in this fight. I think his hands are going to be too quick. I think, honestly, I think wherever the fight goes, he's the better fighter. I think he's tougher. Um, well, maybe not. Yeah, I would say he's tougher. I would say that uh, Hooker is more durable. Mark Dickey definitely have a uh, definitely has a speed advantage. I think he can mix in takedowns. I think he's got some ground and pound that can hurt Dan Hooker. And you have to be careful with Hooker because he is a long rangey guy, and he could throw something up and maybe catch Dickey in it. But there is fights when you go back and watch Dan Hooker. If you get him in the right position, you can submit this guy as well before he came into the UFC. So he's probably he's probably um, got better at that aspect, but there's still holes in there, and Diakese is not really known a, as your kind of submission guy. Uh, guy. So I think Diakese is going to catch him with a shot and put him down. I think initially when he puts him down, he's just going to really be dominant in the fight, and I think he can get a stoppage here. So those fast hands, fast kicks, I think are going to come into... Uh, come into the fight round about the second round and I think that Diakese is going to take him out so a TKO victory there for Mark Diakese, I don't know what the lines are, might be a guy I actually bet, um, I haven't looked really too much in the betting side of it, so I've been working my backside off so I will have two or three bets for the card and Diakese is definitely one of the guys I, I uh, have my eye on for throwing a little bit of money down so Diakese round two TKO and the main fight of the prelims were Khalil Roundtree against Mikhail Olex Janjuk, however his name is, it's hard. I'm struggling. I don't usually struggle with names, but that's a name I, I, I'm really struggling with. So I'm going to call him Mikhail. Um, he's supposed to fight Ion Kutalaba, and uh, obviously that fight got pulled in New York. Khalil Roundtree, we'll start off with him. Uh, Dynamite striker. He was supposed to face Gokan Saki. I loved that fight. I, I had Gokan Saki in that fight. Um, 
Khalil Roundtree. I he was in Glasgow for his last fight, and I picked Paul Craig, which is probably a bit of a homer pick. And sometimes I make that. I need to get better at that. I've been saying it for years, but it's hard to get away from your kind of local fighters and so on. Um, even though you watch the tape and you think they have a chance and the, the home crowd can still spur them on, Paul Craig absolutely. He got the shit beat out of him, and the the, the sec I think I released my video on the Monday. I went to Glasgow on the the Wednesday, and I met Khalil on the Wednesday. And from the minute I shook his hand, I knew that Paul Craig was in deep shit. For the simple reason, Khalil was scowling all week. He was in fight mode from the minute he got to Scotland. Um, and I asked him about it. He says his mentality's changed for this fight. He can't be the the guy that's shaking hands and. Um, being friendly with fighters during fight week like he was with Tyson Pedro he can't be that guy anymore and from that minute on there I knew that he was going to put a beating on Paul Craig and he, he did it devastatingly he picked his shots really well and then he just hurt uh, Paul Craig at the end of that first round and put him down for a really really nice win in front of a hostile crowd um, and he, he quietened down the crowd but I do still think there is a definitive weak link in his game and that's getting taken down I don't think that his opponent is the guy that's going to do that here so this is a favourable matchup in, for him in my opinion and I can see him winning f fairly early on maybe in the first round early second round from what I've seen from uh, Mikhail he, his striking is very sloppy um, but he's tough he's one of those Middle Eastern guys who's very very tough uh, and he does enough to kind of win fights I just think Cleo Roundtree is the better striker here more power more speed more uh, variation, more combinations, and I think he will find a way. I don't know whether he'll maybe sit back like he did against Paul Craig and pick his shots a little bit more. I think he can be a little bit more aggressive in this fight, where he can come forward uh, and not really worry about too much about getting taken down. Paul Craig, to the only thing that he really had was if he, if he could take down Khalil, he would win the fight probably. I don't think that he has to worry about that with this opponent here. So I'm going to pick. I'm fairly confident Khalil to finish the fight here. Um, possibly I'm going to go a first round finish I think he can catch him with a, a really nice combination as Mikhail's against the against the cage and, and, and he can land some big bombs from there so Khalil round three um, first round uh, TKO and I really hope they put him against Gohan Saki back together because I think that could be a, a really fun fight so Khalil round three for the victory there and moving on to the pay-per-view card right now and we've got one of the the guys I love watching, I have loved watching for many years, return back here. Carlos Condit against Neil Magny. I think there's a tough fight for Carlos Condit to return to. I really do. I think that there's been interviews where he's saying he's returning for a paycheck. When I see shit like that, I don't like it. I really don't like it. And it's a shame because I went back and I've been watching Carlos Condit's fights for years. W, uh, WEC fights. Got to watch him in London when he, he absolutely sparked out Dan, Handy, uh, Dan Hardy with a beautiful, beautiful shot and like silenced the crowd. I've never heard like it was so quiet in that place. It was crazy, but the shot that he caught him with was unbelievable. Um, and the guy is just an all-action fighter. But I think he is the he's not the fighter he once was. And I think that even in the fights with Martin Campman, he took a lot of shots. In the fight with Thiago Alves, he took shots. The Robbie Lawler fight, he took so many shots. And in round five, the amount of shots that he take, uh, took and the, the shots that he he got handed to him in that fight, those are, are fights that affect your career. And I think he said the right thing by stepping away um, from the sport for a while. After losing to Damien Maia, I mean, he got elbowed a little bit and he kind of fell back. I don't think it was like a powerful shot because Maia is really not known as a powerful guy. But... I just there's something about Carlos Condit. I think this is oh it's hard because I'm a Carlos Condit. I'm trying to be I'm a Carlos Condit fan. Uh, I love the way he fights. I don't think there's anybody out there that doesn't like the way this guy fights. He's brutal, nasty, dirty. Wants to get into, into wars. But I think Neil Magny has a style that can actually kind of stifle Carlos Condit. I think that he can fight long. The, the way kind of Neil Magny loses to explosive guys with big kind of strikes. I don't think Carlos Condit is that guy or not. Maybe at one time he was in certain aspects, but like with Hafield de Sanjos hitting with massive, massive leg kicks, Hector Lombard hitting with some big shots, um, but he's, he's stuck around and uh, he stayed in the fight in that fight with Lombard and got the win there. 
I think that Neil Magny can win this fight. I'm actually, I was fairly confident in Carlos, well, not fairly confident, because I obviously had the, those thoughts in my mind where I was thinking, Carlos Connors come back, there's going to be a little bit of rust, there's going to be a little bit trepidation maybe coming back after those big losses that he had um, in big fights. And then I looked into the Neil Magny fights and I thought to myself, this he can win rounds against Carlos Condit. I really do. I think he can fight long. I think he can frustrate Carlos. Uh, if Carlos cannot back Neil Magny up against the fence and maybe land some shots, I think that Magny is going to pop from distance, leg kicks, uh, use that long jab, kind of angle off and win very close rounds. Uh, I would like a Carlos Condit win. But when I was watching the fights back, I like Neil Magny. I think that Neil Magny, I don't think I'm going to bet. I've not, I think I did see the early lines for it where he was an underdog. I think it was maybe plus 150, but that was maybe five, six days ago now. So I don't know what the lines are. Uh, I'll, I'll, obviously, I'll not be betting this fight, uh, this fight because I think Condit is dangerous. He still has those danger, dangerous tendencies and he's a Jackson fighter. Now, they're on a pretty bad run at the minute with losing fights, but... Um, I would like a Carlos win, but I just think Neil Magny is going to outwork him over three rounds here and win a decision. Even if Carlos wins this fight, I think it will probably fade him in his next fight, possibly. Um, don't like the fact he's come back for just the, the money. I've always said that you have to win these fights. You have to come back and try and win fights and try and get to that championship belt. That belt is the be-all and end-all, really. So... I'm going to pick Neil Magny for a decision. I think he's going to frustrate Carlos Condit. I think he's going to win the decision. So I'll stop rambling on about that. Moving on, uh, women's strawweight division, uh, Cynthia Calvillo against Carla Sparza. This is a, a really interesting fight to me because I see that um, just the little peekings that I've had this week or the last two weeks probably, I've seen a lot of people very, very high in Cynthia Calvia, and I love Cynthia Calvia. I think she's a really fun fighter, a really nice woman. Um, but I think Carla Sparza has the kind of game that could maybe give her problems. Now, we all know what Calvia is all, all about. A striking, I thought it looked better against Joanne Calderwood. Uh, I don't think it was that great, but she did enough um, on the feet to against a girl who was definitely better on the feet than her, but she showed that she's a really, really solid fighter in her own aspect and can uh, can do enough to stay there. Now with Sparza, I thought she showed better striking against Marina Moroz, but ultimately her game is wrestling and taking you down and stifling you and winning rounds through that. If she does that in this fight, she has to contend with the guard of Cynthia Calvillo. Very dangerous. We've seen in the fights before the UFC, she throws up uh, wild submissions um, and she can advance positions and sweep and get into big positions she can find submissions really well um and that's something that i think this fight's going to hit the ground i think carla's going to get takedowns but she has to be very careful i can envision her getting a takedown being in a dumb position and then just leaving something out there in calvillo catching an armbar um i think that carla sparza is very live here i think there's a another step up against a girl who's got i think a really good skill set with her wrestling if she can use it I think the striking, it's going to be fairly even. I really do. I don't see any really definitive advantage with them both here. Uh, Calvillo's not a power hitter. She might poke with those leg kicks a little bit, which might get takedowns for Esparza. I think Esparza is live here, but I initially when I thought about the fight, I thought Esparza can win. And then the more I'm kind of getting closer to the fight, I think that she will get taken down. And I think she will leave a limb out there where Calvillo is just going to throw something up and get a submission. So... The way I'm kind of leaning now is Cynthia Calvillo um, via submission. But honestly, Carla Spars, I think, might be a good play in this card. I don't think I'll be betting anything out. Maybe uh, I'll maybe need to see what the over is. But um, Cynthia Calvillo for me via submission. I'm going to go early round number three in a very close fight up until then. So Carla Spars, a third round. I'm going to go an armbar. That's what I initially envisioned with with this fight. So, Calvillo via a uh, submission in the third. Uh, next up was supposed to be Jimmy Rivera against John Lineker. Last few hours, it's been revealed that John Lineker is out of the fight. He had to have emergency surgery. I can't remember what it was for. Um, Jimmy Rivera is saying that he still wants to fight in the card. There's been people like Marlon Marais uh, say he wants to fight Chito Vera. Brian Kelleher has stepped up. Interesting to see if they keep him on the card. I think they have to keep him on the card. 
it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up fighting Cheeto Vera. I think that's a fight that they were Cheeto was wanting in the past and it never it never came to fruition. So, but say hopefully Jimmy gets a fight because I think he missed his honeymoon, which is which sucked for him. So, uh, yeah, I'm if if a fight gets put together, I'll, I'll put in the drop down box who I'm going to pick when the opponent gets announced, if it gets announced, I think they need to keep them in this card, they can't go forward with the, like nine or ten fights in the card, I think they need a little bit more, um, so yeah, moving on to the co-main event, Ooh, this is a great fight folks, Khabib Nurmagomedov against Edson Barboza, when I heard about this fight, I was literally rubbing my hands, I thought this is a great fight, and I'm really quite confident in one guy, but this is the benefit of going back and watching fights, because, Initially, I really liked Edson Barboza. I thought he's got the game plan here to maybe evade Khabib's wrestling and uncork some massive kicks, leg kicks, some strikes. Now, if you watch the... And then the whole Khabib being off, Khabib only fights like once a year, so you have to refresh your memory with his fights. And then when you refresh your memory with his fights, you see this guy is so elite in one aspect of the game, it's not even funny. Um, but it's getting there, that's the problem. Now, we've seen in the fight with Michael Johnson, with Khabib, he was getting tagged early, he was getting hit with some shots, and Barboza is of that similar disposition where, where he's striking, that he can land something on Khabib at any moment and maybe hurt him at any moment. Um, and we've seen that in the Darius fight, he threw up that the most vicious flying knee we've seen in a long time, um, caught Darius right in the button. Darius was down for a long time, and uh, the guy's got that kind of technique where he can take you out with one shot, or he can hurt you really badly over three rounds. And that's kind of where I'm leaning with this one because can he stop Khabib Nurmagomedov from getting his hands on him and get him to the ground? Because if he gets him to the ground, I don't think Edson Barboza gets back up. I don't think if if Khabib is on you, I don't think there's anybody that can get up from this guy, and that's, as I said, I was initially very, very, very confident in Barboza, but then you go back and watch Khabib, and it's just so hard to pick against this guy, like, he's, he's grappling, his control, his ground and pound, his relentlessness on the ground is second to none, and it's actually, it's something actually amazing to watch, is that guy on the ground with his, like, the way he grabs your hand, and he can grab your forearm, and he pulls it in, to kind of move around to get strikes in the side or he could tie up the leg to to hit you to the face and, and just grab a hold of you and just bear hug you and beat the the living piss out of you pretty much it's actually a skill set i love watching it's something like i know it's not everybody's cup of tea is could be um, like heavy ground and pound guys who who are really dominant it's something i love to watch and i have done for years um so you have to admire a skill set like that Barboza is dangerous though. If you're taking a shot on Edson Barboza, I wish you good luck because I think he has opportunities where he could hurt Khabib here. Khabib should literally want nothing on the feet with Edson Barboza. He needs to get this to the ground. He's not going to win a striking battle. He's not going to... If he starts accumulating damage, Barboza is only going to come into it more um, and win the fight. I just think that Khabib is going to get takedowns in every round. And through there, he's going to win rounds. So, Khabib Nurmagomedov could maybe win a, a TKO. I think I'm going to go a decision there. It's a tough fight. Potentially, Barbosa could come out, win the first round, and then Khabib needs to go big in the round two and three. It's it's a hard fight to choose for me. Um, I would like to see Barbosa win, if I'm being honest with you. I know I'm an admirer of Khabib's skill set, but I, I do like Barbosa a lot. But I think Khabib is an absolute animal. He's an animal. He's a savage. Um... And I'm really happy to see him back fighting after the shenanigans we had with Tony Ferguson earlier in this year. So uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov is going to be the pick via decision there. But really looking forward to that fight, I must admit. And the Women's Featherweight Championship is on the line in our main event here as Chris Cyborg faces off against Holly Holm in a really, really, really interesting fight, I must admit. Uh, I'm seeing lots of people being very high on Chris Cyborg. And I can see why, because she is very dominant. But I think Holly Holm has the perfect kind of skill set to really stifle Chris Cyborg and frustrate her and win rounds against her. I really do. Um, yeah, Holly Holm, 
we'll, we'll start off like that, that fight with Betch Cahia, nothing was really happening. She was kind of pot shot and um, Cahia was just, Cahia's not a good fighter. Like you should be taking that guy really, really, really quickly. But she was just being picky with her shots. Eventually she got that high kick up the question mark kick and um, really unloaded with um, on like with that head kick put her down then she followed up with a, a strike that put that put Cahia on uh, Dream Street um, Holly Holm's going to fight long here I think she's going to pick when, actually I was quite interested when I seen pictures earlier on she's definitely got bigger she's put on a little bit of muscle mass um, and I think she's of a similar kind of height to what Cyborg is I think on fight night I think that Cyborg will obviously be the bigger girl but um, I think that she has maybe the same kind of dimensions to, to really compete with Cyborg. I just think this is going to be a competitive fight. I think people are too easy to be writing off Holly Holm here. I think she has a game, a game plan or a skill set that can really give Chris Cyborg fits a little bit. I thought Chris Cyborg looked a little bit tentative in a fight with Tonya Evinger. Um, I thought she could have got her out of there earlier, just didn't really go for it as much as I thought she would and uh, Evan just stuck around a lot longer than I thought she would. I think that she's obviously going to be the aggressor in this fight where Holly Holm's going to want to use those big kicks and those little like side kicks, the oblique kicks um, and not get caught in a firefight with, with Cyborg because Cyborg clearly has the bigger power and can really put it on you when she wants to. I, I still go back to that Invicta fight I watched in Vegas where she absolutely destroyed that girl. That girl was shitting herself before she even got in the cage. But I don't think Holly Holm is this kind of fighter where she's going to be like that. I think she's going to relish the, the opportunity. I think she's going to really look forward to this fight. And I do think she can cause Cyborg problems. Um, now, I know I'll probably take some shit for even suggesting that Holly Holm can win this fight. I believe she can win this fight. If you don't, and then I don't think you're looking at it properly. You're looking at all the the old fights of Cyborg destroying girls, girls she had no right being in there with, like your Faith Van Duens and all them. She had no right being in there with those kind of girls. Um, Holly Holm, she just has to be careful. She took some big shots in that Durandamy fight. I know that some of them were a little bit dirty. Uh, if she takes those same kind of shots here against Cyborg, Cyborg will put her down. Um, but I'm going to pick Cyborg to actually win a decision. I think that Holly Holm's going to run. She's going to win rounds, first and foremost. I think she can win a round or two. But I think this might be the first time we see Chris Cyborg go to a decision. Um, oh, that feels weird even saying, like, Chris Cyborg win a decision. That feels weird, I must admit. You know what, I'm going to change that. Yeah, I'm going to change that because that's a little bit out there. I'm going to go a late fourth or fifth round TQ victory for Chris Cyborg. I think she'll she'll maybe figure out Holly Holm, maybe cut her off uh, and land some big shots. But honestly, I might be looking at the, the Chris Cyborg via uh, decision prop just to see what that is. If it's quite high, I might take a little, little stab at it. But uh, yeah, I'm going to pick Chris Cyborg. I was going to pick her via decision, but it's hard to, to, to really... Commit to that when when she when she think about all the fights with Chris Cyborg, so I'll go a late I'll go early fifth round, TKO so close to decision. So that's my picks for UFC 219. My last one of 2017. It's been a really good year for my channel again, uh, and I'm looking forward to 2018. Just making my channel grow, getting more views, guys conversing with me, conversing with other fans, talking fights. Um, thank you all so much again. Merry Christmas, a happy New Year. I uh, hope you have a great time over the festive period. I know I'm looking forward to the next few hours getting up in my baby girl with our first Christmas. So um, all the best. I'll be back. I think the next card is the 14th of January. So the first week in January, I'm sure I'll pop something out there for you guys for Jeremy Stevens against Doho Choi. Um, again, enjoy the festive period. Enjoy UFC 219 when it comes around. And all the very best. And I will catch up with you very, very soon.